I can't take credit for this slide because in case it's wrong, a gentleman in the audience uh, mentioned this to me after a recent trip to, to speak at a minor metal trade association uh, meeting. But the answer is lithium, scandium, hopnium. So what's the question? This is the question. Th this is actually the hot topic today in uh, green technology. Uh, it, which and it essentially boils down to what are we talking about? We're, we're in our, we need to uh, sustain clean tech and green tech, which is how do we do that? Do we uh, elect more politicians? Do, do we build more windmills, uh, excuse me, wind turbines? Or, or do we worry about how you do things like that? I worry about how you things, do things like that. And I think earlier in the panel we touched on the to me, what is the primary issue here? Is it going to be free market capitalism, the goal of which is profit, or is it going to be industrial policy, which is what governments do to try to direct uh, a nation's economy towards helping a few more people than capitalists would, would want to help? The answer is I don't know, but uh, we don't have to worry because the world is already in this situation. Uh, our our part of the world is a so-called free market economy, and their part of the world is a is a basically a command economy, or as, or as they used to call it in the 30s, fascism. In any case, so here here's the question. You know, as I, I just said, which, which are we going to do? We in the West, and, and I'm I'm including in that the the U.S., Canada, Western Europe. Japan and Korea, I don't think I've left anybody out, uh, are, we now produce today more than 50%, maybe two-thirds of the world's wealth. We, in the past, were the large consumers of natural resources. We, we're a mature economy. Uh, we don't need additional materials. We need replacement materials, all of us. In the meantime, the Chinese have dis, uh, predicted that in the year 2049, they will have an account, a GDP of $30,000 a person with nearly 2 billion people. That would be then be four times the size of today's American economy. And, e and even if America uh, increases its population, we seem to be stagnating on our creation of wealth. So the Chinese are planning to be the world's richest nation and largest economy within your lifetime, not mine. Okay. Now, here's the interesting thing. We, we talk, everybody talks about steel, right? I mean, that's the backbone, blah, blah, blah. We, we don't uh, seem to notice that China produces more steel than all of the other nations of the world put together. They produce a United States Navy every eight or nine hours in displacement. So uh, that's, remember a hundred years ago, that was how you rated nations, the size of their fleet, okay? If, if that were the case today, China would probably just build a chain of ships across the Pacific and, and walk to California. And these are very interesting numbers. Today, the United States, which in 1947 produced half of the world's steel, now produces 5%. We use 5.4%, so we have to import material. And our, our steel in this country is produced from primarily, well, more than 50%, from scrap and electric arc furnaces. Any, any blast furnaces using iron ore to produce iron steel in the United States are fed with ore from Minnesota, for example, like they always have been. Uh, we, we, I'm not sure that we import any iron ore, but it could be, but not much. Okay, we're self-sufficient. Why? Because our installed steel is, got a, is millions and millions and millions of tons. And all we do is replace things. Other than in Michigan, for example, bridges and roads are repaired on a regular basis. Um, so that uses steel, but that steel comes, the, the great sources of, of, of steel scrap in the United States are, domestic, are automotive, and what's called structural. Uh, when they tear a building down, the infrastructure goes back in the furnace. So we don't need any of that. Here, here's the problem. 
the technology metals that we've been talking about, they're all byproducts, almost all of them. And they're byproducts of base metals. Now remember, it, it, you know all of you that the base, base metal production or common metal production is way, way down because we're oversupplied with things. In this country, we actually don't need anything much. Uh, so uh, here, here's the big, big problem. Most of the technology metals are companion metals to the base metals. When the base metal is first mined and refined, you get also technology metals. Now, they were ignored in the past, but since World War II, we've been recovering gallium from aluminum and tellurium and selenium from, from copper and, and rhenium from copper and molybdenum and all that stuff. Okay. But we're, we are actually the great recycling nation of base metals, as is Europe, as is Japan and, uh, and Korea. And the recycled metal contains no technology metals, the base metals. That's gone. You get it the first time only. Now, this is called the Wheel of Companionability. It was, it, it was developed by uh, an academic group at Yale University. And what it shows you is where we get metals. Now, the inner, uh, the hub of, of the wheel names uh, base metals. They're not in any particular order. I didn't create this. Uh, but let's say from top right, it's aluminum, titanium, iron, nickel, copper. The next ring are the, are the companion metals, i.e. what we call traces and byproducts, most commonly found in these things. Now, if, if you look real hard for scandium, it's, I'm not going to tell you where it is, but you can, you'll find it. And there isn't much of that, we know that. And even though someone today told me there, there are, there, there, he has a mind that he's calling a primary scandium source, scandium is really a trace metal, a companion metal in, in a few things. It's, it's interestingly enough, found in iron and uh, deposits of, uh, containing niobium. That's, that's where it reports. That's nature's design, not ours. So let's say, look at copper, selenium and tellurium. Here's the news for you. They are most, according to this, 100% of them essentially are recovered from primary copper mining. The world production of tellurium and selenium together is a few thousand tons to give you an idea of what 100% of something means. Oh, yeah. Okay. What I did was I asked someone to do this for me, and they did it. And uh, hopefully you can get a copy of this. But this is just to highlight these, if the, the center, at nearest the, the center of the circle. These are the metals that drive our civilization. Iron, nickel, copper, zinc, lead, tin. Um, and the, these metals like platinum, the platinum group and gold, aluminum, titanium. These, these were, uh, especially gold and platinum, were included to show what other metals are always associated. Like gold is always associated with silver, almost always. The, when the first coinage was electrum, and they didn't know what it was. It was sort of gold, but it really wasn't. And then, and then quite frankly, they learned how to extract the silver, and, and that, was, that was the beginning of modern coinage about 2,500 years ago. I just like this thing because <laughs> you could do this. But in any case, I'm hoping you, I think, there, didn't I publish something on Investor Intel with this wheel? Yes, okay. You really need to look at this because when you think that something is readily available or who cares about, uh, about rhenium, you better understand where rhenium comes from. Rhenium is a byproduct of molybdenum and half of the molybdenum is a byproduct of copper mining. There is primary molybdenum. And then, the, and then when, you, when you take the molybdenum out of copper and you roast it, the rhenium oxide volatilizes into the collector, and then you collect that. That's the rhenium. And world production is a, is a glorious 50 tons, but it outdoes scandium at the moment by 5 to 1. You want to increase the production of, of rhenium? It's very easy. Mine a few extra millions of tons of copper. So that isn't going to happen. Okay, I've got 43 seconds. Here's what I'm telling you. Without recycling, selective recycling of technology metals will simply run out of them, period.
because we are not in this country or in the West going to overproduce millions and millions of tons of copper, even if we could, to get a little tiny bit of rhenium. It won't happen. So we have to conserve these metals and recycle them. That is going to be the big push in the next 10 years. That's it. A lot of time. Thank <laughs> you.